For our top story this morning, we begin with the resignation of British Prime Minister Theresa May. May addressed the British public this morning, saying she would quit as Conservative Party leader on June 7th. She will stay on as Prime Minister until a successor is chosen, a process that could take several weeks. Support for May had been dwindling within the Conservative Party due to her failure to deliver on her pledge to withdraw Britain from the European Union, a plan commonly known as Brexit. May admitted that she tried three times to convince lawmakers to approve a Brexit deal, but failed to do so every time. Back here in the U.S., the Senate voted overwhelmingly to pass a $19 billion aid package that includes money for hurricane-battered Puerto Rico and mainland states hit by natural disasters. The legislation now goes to the Democratic-controlled House, which is also expected to pass it. President Trump said he will sign it, even though funding to handle an influx of migrants at the southern border was removed. The Trump administration has announced another $16 billion to help bail out U.S. farmers. Montana farmers are struggling under the financial strain of lost export markets and five years of falling commodity prices. Our Montana Ag Network's Russell Nimitz has reaction. Well, after a lot of speculation, the Trump administration has unveiled a new $16 billion trade aid program for U.S. farmers hurt financially by the ongoing trade war with China. During remarks at the White House, the president said he's defending American farmers from unjustified trade retaliation. So we will ensure that our farmers get the relief they need and very, very quickly. It's a good time to be a farmer. We're going to make sure of that. So today I'm announcing that I have directed Secretary Purdue to provide $16 billion in assistance to America's farmers and ranchers. It all comes from China. Highlights of the second trade mitigation package include $14.5 billion in direct payments to farmers based on the county-based payment rate for their planted acreage for 2019. This is to avoid planting distortions by requiring farmers to plant a crop this spring. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue praised the president for supporting U.S. farmers, but Montana Grain Growers Association President Lyle Benjamin of Sunburst told me farmers like him would rather have higher market prices instead of government payments. It's nice that the president recognizes the significant damage that's happening as part of this, but at the end of the day, really what we want is, is our trade deal to open back up again and, and our market to flow unhindered. It's, I think that most Montana farmers would say we can get far more out of the, the market than we can out of a, a government aid package. Under the second trade mitigation package, the new payments will be capped at the total amount of eligible acreage a farmer planted last year. Eligible crops in our region include alfalfa hay, barley, canola, corn, pulses, soybeans, and wheat. And USDA says payments could start as early as July or August. In Billings, Russell Nemitz, MTN News. The announcement marks the second move in the past week by the White House to soften the blow on U.S. farmers from trade conflict. Last week, the Trump administration struck a deal with Canada and Mexico to drop the steel and aluminum tariffs imposed a year ago. U.S. agriculture groups hope that move will encourage Congress to ratify the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement. A Billings home receives $100,000 in damages following a fire sparked by cooking oil. The fire was reported just after midnight at 824 24th Street West. Cooking oil was left on the stove with the burner on, igniting a fire that caused heavy damage to the kitchen and attic. There was someone home when the fire broke out, but no injuries were reported. State regulators are close to wrapping up a two-week hearing on Northwestern Energy's electric rate case before the Public Service Commission. Over the past two days, however, the focus wasn't on general rates, but rather on how Northwestern wants to treat rooftop solar customers. Right now, solar customers use the excess power they generate at the same price as other customers. Northwestern is proposing a new demand charge for solar customers based on peak consumption. The proposal was criticized by solar advocates, saying 
saying this would make solar too expensive to build. The PSC will make its final decision in the coming weeks. Tribal leaders joined Governor Steve Bullock to celebrate new law to address missing and murdered indigenous women. Bullock signed the legislative package, which includes Hannah's Act, along with a bill to survey reservation economic impact and a bill to create a tribal monument at the Capitol. Leaders say the passage of these bills will have a big impact on addressing native issues. And also this year, a record number of Native Americans were elected to the legislature. Back here in Billings, we're getting an inside look at the newly renovated and more spacious Eastern Montana Crime Lab. As Q2's Andrea Lutz reports, this lab will serve 32 counties and was needed for quite some time. It took six months to renovate what most people remember as the Wild West Bar. But now it's the Eastern Montana Crime Lab. And inside these walls, things are much different. Everything about this building suits the needs that we have. The lab is divided into two parts, the morgue and chemistry analysis. Each now has more space than before. The space at the old facility was just inadequate. It's a convenience factor because Billings, you know, being one of the largest cities, like, we needed this facility. Montana Attorney General Tim Fox helped publicly usher in the new lab by thanking leaders in Yellowstone County. He says this facility will help Montana continue to have a cutting edge forensic sciences division. With two pathologists now in Billings, we have an adequate workforce for the amount of cases that we have. With 1,500 chemistry cases anticipated for 2019, over 300 autopsies set to happen this year too. The need for a crime lab in Billings is huge. Drug-related and violent crimes continue to occupy law enforcement time. There is um, a high uh, drug problem here. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad in a way, um, but just having this facility here, it helps the turnaround time. And because time is precious in an investigation, travel to Missoula is now cut down. And there's even the opportunity to expand this building in the future. In Billings, Andrea Luce, MTN News. Andrea also tells us going forward there is an advisory committee that will continue to work with the Eastern Montana Crime Lab to ensure it's heading in the right direction. Emergency care personnel were honored at the Montana Capitol Thursday as a part of National Emergency Medical Services Week. The Department of Public Health and Human Services and First Lady Lisa Bullock recognized first responders for their commitment and sacrifices made serving their fellow Montanans. Speakers emphasized in a big rural state like Montana, EMS provides a critical service in providing care and saving lives. Paramedic and firefighter Sarah Lewin of Miles City was recognized as this year's career EMS provider. Lewin says the work can be hard, but she's surrounded by an amazing team and couldn't imagine doing anything else. EMS personnel from Whitehall, Lewistown, and Billings were also recognized at the event. The average Montana resident will need ambulance services at least twice in his or her lifetime. A World War II soldier finally makes it back to Montana. MTN's Cody Boyer has a story of Private William Bodgley and his long journey home. Private William Bogley was killed in action 1944 while protecting those who were running out to save the wounded. All these decades later, his family got to see him come home. He was from Sedan, Montana, farm boy. Montana boy that became a hero. Private William Bogley's story started and ended near the Philippines. A soldier in the U.S. Army, his nephew Don McHenry, says it was September 30th, 1944. They wanted to capture this island to make a jumping off point to invade the Philippines. Except trouble. Well, after 380 some people were killed, they decided it wasn't worth it. All the while, men carrying stretchers to help the wounded ran into the fray. Private Bogley, Don's Uncle Bill, volunteered to guard them, an act that Don retold to a room full of military, friends, and family. Montana has that mindset. They're willing to do whatever it takes. But then, for all intents and purposes, he disappeared. He was killed on September 30th, 1944, and they buried him at that time there. Then they dug him up in 1947 and tried to identify remains. I think his number was XP3, 
3008. In 1995, after being transported and buried at Fort McKinley, then placed in a mausoleum, the soldier's remains made it to Hawaii. After DNA testing, William's name became clear. April of last year, I get a call from a lady that was a contractor for the U.S. Army at, were telling me they're trying to uh, identify remains of missing MIAs. She said, would you be willing to talk to one of the ar Army guys, regular Army guys? And, and we said, yeah, well, I certainly would. And almost exactly 74 years after his death, Don got another call. Uncle Bill was coming home. And today, by plane, Private Bogley made the trip that he should have made seven decades ago. Pretty special, and it's too bad that my mother and her brothers didn't realize, you know, didn't get to know that. They didn't know what happened to him. He could have been buried in Arlington with the caissons and the whole, the whole nine yards, but we chose to have him buried here. Why? This is where he was born and raised. Farm boy, uncle, soldier, hero. A fitting set of titles for a man whose return was long overdue. Just never leave up hope and honor the veterans because they gave up a lot for us. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Don says Private Bogley was awarded the Purple Heart and the Silver Star for his gallantry while serving. His funeral is set for Saturday in the